will be starting early. So instead of starting at 11 to the, into the three venues uh, by 10.45. Excellency, Ms. Ami Kharpo, the uh, Deputy President High Commissioner for Fiji and High Commissioner Tuvalu, the uh, Acting Vice Chancellor of the USP and Dr. Palmer, uh, Mr. Yugesh Karan, the Permanent Secretary at the Office of the Prime Minister, Permanent Secretary of Immigration, Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Sugar, and Permanent Secretary of Ministry of, Ministry of Waterways. Um, Mr. Patel, the um, Dean of the Water Business um, Economics, uh, Dr. Nilesh Gounder, the uh, head of USP Specific of the team, representatives of the University's developing partners, members of the regional and international organizations, senior government officials, members of the University Council, members of the USP Senate, Mr. Guest, and in general. Well, we like and a good morning to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honor to be present amongst you this morning for the whole thing of the 2018 Pacific Update and the welcome of Mr. Guest PG. We have come together to deliberate on important policy issues in the region. I bring along our Honorable Prime Minister here at Marvel Kimbani a special words of appreciation of your presence here in Sula and PG, and I invite you all to enjoy Fijian hospitality during your visit. I, at this junction, applaud the efforts of the partners to this conference, the Asian Development Bank, Australian National University's Development Policy Centre, the other sponsors, and our very own regional University of the South Pacific School of Economics uh, for organising this forum. From the first forum which started up in 2012, this conference has grown in such a size and quality and extend my commendation to successful partnerships. We have worked in this highly successful event to where it is today. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pacific Update Conference is a vital forum for discussing important issues of public policy in the region. It is important for governments to get an outside expert opinion on critical matters that will not only ensure that we make the most efficient use of state resources, but also to ensure that we navigate our country in the right direction to secure a brighter future for future conditions of Pacific Islanders. <coughs> Having spent close to four years in Parliament and having been at the helm of two ministries, I fully understand how important this former facility is. The concerted deliberations to the gathering of policy makers, academics, researchers, private sector and public sector partners, business people and other development practices adds to the prestige of this conference. It is an excellent example of the link between research and policy, thus contributing to better use of research findings for the ultimate benefit of the society. But ladies and gentlemen, having been in academia in the past and now in policy making in Atlanta, I have noted that sometimes, if not often, research follows policy making. It has to be the other way around. Policy must depend on sound research. Instead, in the absence of sound homegrown research, we tend to rely on policy successes in other countries to decide on policy options at home. I do hope that in future, now that we have approved last year, the establishment of a National Research Council, we could engage more with academia to support policy making. As I've said, it is not only about optimal public sector resource use, but more so about mapping the best path for future generations. Ladies and gentlemen, we have more than 11 million people in the Pacific who edge onto the Earth's population. We even have 12 island nations who are members of the World Bank. We have some of the world's most unique environments, including the Pacific being the tuna of the world. Our rich culture and traditions have been the jewel of the Pacific, which is marveled by our world. The friendliness and caring attitude of the Pacific people has given us the tech Pacific way. We proud ourselves of our good hospitality. Pacific island nations are also making their mark internationally in other areas such as sports and recreation. As with other countries, we face a number of challenges, some same as what they are faced, what they are faced by others, while some are unique to us all. Despite being in the driver's seat for a reasonable period, we continue to notice prevalence of inequality and hardship amongst our population, for it varying levels amongst the peaks. Our late attention to rural and Chilean maritime community has led to a surge in population growth in urban centers, with urban centre growth benefits trickling down to 
only a small number of urban population, the oligarchs in particular. Our inadequate campaign and resources for a healthy population has led rights in NCDs, and the poor inadequate investment in resilience building infrastructure has contributed to greater vulnerability for major disasters, exploitation of major resources, and more recently, climate change effects. We need to join hands with all stakeholders in tackling these issues. Conferences of this nature which seek to evaluate policies and research aimed at countering Pasbigalian issues is highly instrumental. Over the last three and a half years, we have dismantled a number of taboos and myths followed by our critics. One taboo was using public funds to small and micro, and micro small and micro entrepreneurs. After the collapse of our national bank, those from the extreme right of the political spectrum argued that government must keep hands off the financial system. But government noted that at its present state of growth and development, we must be the real drivers of the economy. It remodeled its development bank to focus on the agriculture sector and started supporting small operators with micro capital injection. In a small economy like Fiji, facing a small number of players in the corporate sector, there is no other sustainable solution to reducing inequality and increasing greater participation of the ordinary Fijians than to promote small operators via microfinancing. There is remarkable success rate of this initiative. There is the other taboo of limiting expertise in the country, arguing that it will crowd out locals from top positions in private and public sector. Contrary to this thinking, our government has not shied away from getting the best and brightest minds to remodel our economy where we can't find equitable locals. We cannot compete in the global market by not having the best minds leading on various sectors. The results of this philosophy can be seen through Fiji with more to come. The third taboo, taboo and myth has been to hold back on our borrowings to avoid possible debt trap. But government noted that we need to invest in critical infrastructure and renew all infrastructure to support private sector to grow. This will provide much greater attention to the economy in the longer run, surpassing the cost of borrowings and thus not only reducing our debt burden but also deliver on to ultimate long term vision. Data and regards to this reveal that we are doing remarkably well, if not extremely well, on this front. The fourth taboo, as echoed by some members of the opposition party in Parliament, is where all these graduates from our tertiary institutions will go, giving government substantial investment in the education sector. These comments are based on the narrow view that Fiji is the only market and that all of the graduates will be job seekers. We do not want only we do not only want a knowledge-based society where individuals will conduct themselves based. We do want a knowledge-based society where individuals will conduct themselves based on full information. But we also also want to expand the private sector in the long run. We want thinkers, a thinking community, urging to be an entrepreneur. Until such time we are able to achieve this, we will not be able to provide a sustainable solution to the problem of unemployment in small state economies, be it Pacific, the Caribbean, or the small states of the region. The fifth taboo and myth has been that climate change may not pose a real danger to volcanic countries like Fiji. Contrary to the school of thought, our government took this issue head on. Honorable Prime Minister has led the charge at the global level by taking up the presidency of the 23rd Conference of Parties on Climate Change. And at the local level, we have taken significant steps to build resilience to climate change and mitigate effects on vulnerable communities and our infrastructure. We now have a dedicated Ministry of Waterways. We have relocated some communities from vulnerable locations and are drafting policies to define conduct of stakeholders carrying out activities on natural resources to name a few. The sixth taboo and myth that has been that has been that our primary sector may no longer play a critical role for the growth and expansion of the secondary and service sectors. Our government believes otherwise. We strongly believe that primary sectors will continue to play a very critical and strategic role in the lives of all Fijians. And if we inject a corporate image in these sectors, then we will no longer see the sector only associated with backward community, but with those who wish to make this a business for themselves. So far, too long, we have riddled on rival investment and advertisements of testing institutions who have revitalized the progress to get high paying jobs in the former sector, thus treating corporate primary sector jobs as not even an alternative sector for investment. Our education system is now being addressed to change the mindset of people, and supporting institutions are being asked to redefine, redefine themselves to deliver on this vision. And lastly, we have crushed the myth that national budget before the election should be an expenditure budget loaded with handouts. We are in the process of building the productive capacity of the economy. 
while at the same time we want to attend to urgent needs of the poor and the low-income households. We will not be irresponsible in raising minimum wage rates out tilt of a sound economy. We will not kill efficiency in sectors by loading it with subsidies and attract more inefficient operators and producers in the sector. We are here not to make policies to win an election, but here to make policies to govern the nation, to provide a brighter future for all Fijians today and years to come. Contrary to what a significant minority, minority may think about the common business lexicon, we are serious about corporate governance within the public sector as well. Our single largest expenditure item is employees' wages and salaries funded by taxpayers. The taxpayers expect nothing but quality service delivery, and that's what our government is striving to achieve via reforms and by construction of service delivery infrastructure. We live in a period where people's expectations are steadily rising, resulting from important changes that is taking place in the structure of the society. In the next decade or so, as our general population is becoming more literate, social adjustments of one kind or another is inevitable in the country. In this era, we must all lead each other to think more about competence at all levels, and this is what we in government have begun to do. And you all must support this endeavor as you are funding the wages and salaries below our civil servants. In this genuine quest to establish competence and quality, we must shed off this axiom of neoclassical consumer choice theory of more is better, as argued by the famous American artist Georgia O'Keeffe, and be inspired by the view of some social scientists that more may not necessarily be sustainable. In conclusion, I wish to congratulate again the organizers for putting together a very comprehensive discourse based on scientific research. I know there are 17 published sessions. And the research papers and presentations by you all are not a mere academic exercise, but a demonstration of you and your organization's commitment towards development and prosperity of Pacific Island countries. While I do accept that some of the papers would deal with subject matter research, thus pushing the frontier of the existing body of knowledge, most papers will be, will be within the parameters of problems of the research. However, in material of the fact that some papers here will be on a subject matter and will be published in a ice time ranked journal, it still has to contribute in some way to the improvement of the welfare of the society at large. Ultimately, that's what the final objective of all this year's work should be, and we must not lose sight of that. Having said this, having said this, we need to continually question this existing body of knowledge as well as expand it, and it's you who are tasked to undertake this novel agenda. You are the critic and conscious of the society. Trust me, we in Cabinet, or, or for our ministerial statements in Parliament, we do read and use research papers and value expert opinions. We look forward to the outcome of these deliberations, and I now have much pleasure in offering the 2018 Pacific update. Gunaka, thank you, and Danwa. in the car park behind this hall.